Welcome to Mastering and Guideline in Ultrasound and Echo. Hi everyone. Uh, another technique for measuring ejection fraction is uh, measuring left ventricular internal diameter or dimension in diastole and in systole and by using the formula we call the Tekel's formula or technique in this way we can finally measure ejection fraction in that case with measuring at the LVID diastole in this formula machine if we use uh, cal in the machine machine calculate for us uh, ventricular volume uh, left ventricular volume at diastole and then when we measure LVID at the systole time then it calculate uh, volume of the left ventricle and uh, systolic then finally by formula it gives us the ejection fraction but uh, this uh, technique and formula is by this assumption that left ventricle uh, is cone shape or more accurate bullet shape only in that situation this formula and technique will be reliable but there are some condition should be uh, applied for being accurate and uh, reliable that at the end of this slide i am going to mention about that in this technique we go get it correct uh, plaques parasternal long axis view then based on the sine loop back and forth we find it the posterior endocardium up to posterior wall uh, make sure we don't have any papillary muscle or corda tendine when we found it uh, at the end of the diastole that between q to r any point that has largest diameter then we go after determining the compact endocardium of posterior wall and uh, septum then we go at that uh, spot make it a line between the tip to papillary muscle any of those spots that is perpendicular to the left ventricle long axis this long axis imaginary long axis then we make it a line perpendicular to that we measure end diastolic diameter left ventricular internal uh, dimension or diameter at the diastole this line as you can see is perpendicular to the left ventricular long axis the spot we choose it based on those uh, recommendations should be around tip of the uh, mitral valve but you have to remember and I mentioned many times from the tip to papillary muscle is rectangle and we go spot that we don't have thinning of the septum and we don't have hypertrophy or sigmoid septum any spot here so we can see at this spot is L belong to the LVOT and the septum is thin so we go beyond that this spot will be the best and our measurement is perpendicular to the left ventricular uh, long axis this is for endostolic then we go again we repeat it as with sine loop we go back and forth make sure finding the compact endocardium especially at the posterior wall as you can see here we have a lot of uh, corda tendine and some trabeculation here so we go back and forth in different timing make sure where is our uh, compact endocardium then you make a line imaginary line for ourselves determine and uh, when we saw it we go at the end of the systole then we measure at the same spot that we measure uh, at the diastole we go the same spot find it and we measure at the systole this and our measurement the same spot and perpendicular to the left ventricular long axis the same way on the ostol and the same way on systole just we make sure we don't include trabeculation corda tendine papillary muscle that is the way we do it but 
this technique will be only will be reliable and accurate that uh, we have first of all we don't have any wall motion abnormality if we have wall motion abnormality it's pointless don't measure uh, systolic just diastolic because it's not reliable and always will be wrong second when we have arrhythmia including uh, irregular beat completely or we have bundle branch block that will be a little less reliable another or we have a fib beats r to r too much variant in that a fib we can do it at least two or three bits uh, average then uh, we get average and the last one when we have asymmetrical wall thickness in that case we don't use uh, this technique too so that is the general rules for measuring ejection fraction for uh, by the uh, 2d or m mode I have to mention here, emphasize that this uh, technique re re being reliable is, first of all, we don't have any of this situation. Second, we have correct plaques that we don't see uh, papillary muscle and we, we are not sh foreshortening or sh uh, off axis then we go to the bits that has largest diameter at that bits that has larger diameter during diastole and during systole because we know with breathing and even a little uh, heartbeat contraction a little angle and axis of the heart will change so when we go measure this technique we have to go if we have three bits uh, acquiring, then we go find the bits that has largest diameter at the ostal and largest diameter at the systole. Then we go measure that one. This uh, technique we can use it on 2D. The same uh, as 2D, we can do uh, ejection, measuring ejection fraction on the personal long axis on M mode. The rules and principle is the same our cursor should pass perpendicular to the left ventricular long axis this is our left imaginary left ventricular long axis almost parallel to this part of the septum and this part of the posterior wall then we put cursor perpendicular to the that line based on the those recommendation that they mentioned we have to put uh, cursor at tip of the mitral valve as you can see here this is not right angle this is off axis so this will be wrong we go that using option rotating the uh, in the different machine different name amm and the, the some machine in another one angle for m a uh, for m mode cursor so we go and turn our cursor make it perpendicular to the imaginary line of the left ventricular long axis in that case this one will be correct at the apex as you can see during systolic and the diastolic our cursor passed to a different spot so this spot will not be okay even is perpendicular and is at the tip of the mitral valve but is not a good spot for getting the best spot is a little beyond that or more accurate here is much better because during the ostal systole still we have uh, average uh, septum and posterior wall after that we go measure at two spots one of them is in the ostal that correspond with almost our largest di dimension between the septum and posterior wall we put on it on the endocardium on the endocardium then we measure LVID diastole then we go at the systole time here uh, then we measure dimension finally machine calculate for us ejection fraction that's again I am emphasizing always go the spot that we have one third of the basal our cursor pass through the perpendicular or right angle of the left ventricular long axis 
a little beyond the aortoventricular junction and before the papillary muscle that will be the way we do for the m mode we can measure these uh, two techniques m mode or 2d on pzax actually pzax will be more accurate and reliable why let's go there if we have good window good window strong endocardium we can see and our uh, image is correct at the short axis or pzax means is circular shape and we don't have those other three principles no wall motion abnormality no arrhythmia no asymmetrical hypertrophy in that case we go the view that between tip of the mitral valve and popular muscle like this you can see sometimes the anterior mitral valve leaflet show up part of it and we are not exactly at popular muscle we are before popular muscle some spot between the popular muscle and tip of the mitral valve at that level when it has circular shape that is the best way measuring ejection fraction for the parasternal window we can do the same way on the ostol and uh, by 2d and m mode on 2d we go find in the ostol close between q to r we measure the line that pass through the center of the left ventricle endocardium endocardium we measure that one will be lvid at the ostol then we go the same bits forward to the systole smallest spot of the cardiac cycle sometime halfway between peak of the t and end of the t then we measure uh, inner to inner on the endocardium on the endocardium pass through the center of the left ventricle that will be LVID at the systole then uh, machine calculate for us uh, ejection fraction as you can see here on this case when you do short access on if we do M mode or cursor with the breathing even hard activity our cursor pass through different level that is the reason M mode in that case will not even win the uh, personal long access that is the reason it not too much reliable and too much accurate because hard long hard access here change and our cursor pass through different level of the left ventricle during cardiac cycle but 2d we can select it exactly and go measure at the center of the left ventricle at the ostal and systole anyway on the m mode it still it will be uh, measurable we can do it very, they were very close five to uh, five percent maybe differences we do the same way we put cursor at the center of the left ventricle we ask the patient hold his or her breath then we get m mode m mode if there is not any differences we go measure endostolic the same way endostolic diameter or dimension and then end systolic then machine calculate for us ejection fraction my final point is that whenever you have those three condition don't measure ejection fraction by this technique because 100 percent will not be accurate and it goes to the report and it sometimes is confusing especially for non-cardiologist uh, doctors like TAPC and TAPSME or all those TDI M mode, we can use uh, the TDI M mode for this purpose too. Uh, it gives us most of the time more clear border of those septum and posterior wall. So if you have it, it's not bad idea use it TDI M mode, and don't forget the same rule and principle we have to follow up for example here as you can see cursor is not perpendicular to the left axis so we have to change it the cursor angle direction make it this way i hope it was useful up to the next time have a wonderful time